Welcome to the session on absolute value equations. We are going to look at solving some equations. And the first one we're going to look at is solve the absolute value of x equal to 3. Well, there's a couple things that we need to consider before doing this. We need to take a look at what happens when we take the absolute value of a positive and a negative number. When we do the absolute value of negative 7, we get a positive 7. Because remember, absolute value is referring to the distance a number is from 0 on the number line. So we get a positive 7. The absolute value of positive 7 is also 7, because they're both distances. So when you're actually solving absolute value equations, most of the time you'll get two possible answers. Um, you'll also have two equations to work with. When we look at this problem, solve the absolute value of x equal to 3, we know that x could be a positive 3, because the absolute value of 3 is 3. But x could also be equal to negative 3, because the absolute value of negative 3 is also a positive 3. So you can see that we get two possible answers here. So let's look at equations that have more than one step. Solve the absolute value of x plus 2 equal to 7. Well, we know that there are two possible, there could be two possible values for x that will give us an absolute value of positive 7. So what we do to solve this is create two equations. So we're going to create two equations. The first one is going to be x plus 2 equal to 7. We remove the absolute value bars. x plus 2 equal to 7 is the first equation we're going to solve. And then x plus 2 equal to negative 7. So we'll solve these, the first one, by subtracting 2 from both sides. And we get x equal to 5. And subtracting 2 from both sides for the second equation gives us x equal to negative 9. So our two possible answers here are x equal to 5 or x equal to negative 9. Now you can check your answers just to be sure that this process does work. If we substitute 5 in for x, the absolute value of 5 plus 2 is the absolute value of 7, which is a 7. If we substitute the negative 9 in, the absolute value of negative 9 plus 2 is the absolute value of negative 7, which is also a positive 7. So those are our two answers for this problem. Remember, you can pause the recording or video if you need more time. Moving on, we have solved the absolute value of 2x minus 3 minus 4 equal to 3. So this one's a little more complicated than the one that we saw previously. Before you can create your two equations, you want to have the absolute value isolated on one side of the equation. So the first step is to isolate the absolute value on one side of the equation. And then your second step is to create two equations. So just make sure that your absolute value um, is isolated, and then create your two equations. So if we take this problem, to isolate the absolute value of 2x minus 3, we're going to add 4 to both sides. That gives us the absolute value of 2x minus 3 equal to 7. And now we'll create our two equations. It'll be 2x minus 3 equal to 7, and 2x minus 3 equal to negative 7. And we'll then go about solving each of these equations. I'm going to add 3 to both sides. That'll give me 2x equal to 10. My next step, since the 2 is multiplying the x, I need to divide it to the other side. So 10 divided by 2 will give me x equal to 5. Or my other answer comes from adding 3 to both sides, again, for the second equation. 
that will give me 2x equal to negative 4. And then since that 2 is multiplying the x, I divide both sides by 2, and I get x equal to negative 2. Negative 4 divided by 2 is a negative 2. So my two answers then are x equal to 5 or x equal to negative 2. So again, if you need to pause, you may do so. So if we go on to the next problem, we have solved the absolute value of 2x minus 5 equal to 0. This is an example where you're only going to have one possible answer because we can't make 0 positive or negative. And the absolute value is isolated on one side by itself, so I'm going to create my equation, 2x minus 5 equal to 0. I create the equation just by dropping the absolute value bars. Again, because I can't make x positive or negative. So we add 5 to both sides, since the 5 is being subtracted. And we get 2x equal to positive 5. And if I divide both sides by 2, since the 2 is multiplying, the x, I get a final answer. Let me that bar there. I get a final answer of x equal to 5 halves or 5 over 2. You do not need to change that to a mixed number. You can leave it as an improper fraction. And last but not least, the absolute value of 3x minus 4 plus 6 equal to 2. The absolute value in this problem is not isolated, so I do need to isolate it by subtracting 6 from both sides. When I do that, I get the absolute value of 3x minus 4 equal to negative 4. Now, if you look at this problem, what makes it different from the other ones that we have done up to this point? Well, if you notice, our absolute value equation is equal to a negative number. But in all of our work with absolute value, we know that the absolute value of a number is never equal to a negative number. Now, the absolute value may be, a part, may be part of a problem where you get a negative answer in the end, um, but your absolute value equation cannot be equal to a negative number because distance is positive. So if you have a situation like this where your absolute value equation is isolated and it is equal to a negative number, you have a no solution. So our answer here is no solution. And that ends this session on absolute value equations.